Yo, what's up guys? So Dana White just announced a bunch of fights while I was at work. I'm on my break right now and I came home for an hour just to record this video and get it out because Dana White just announced a bunch of massive fights for multiple pay-per-views and multiple fight nights as well. Big fights, um, lots of ranked opponents, all of this, so good stuff. We're going to go over them in today's video real quick because i got to get back to work in 45 minutes. But we're going to start off with UFC 298. Um, Whitaker versus Paulo Costa is official for that card. Amazing fight. Um, it was being rumored, being talked about for a long while. I'm picking Robert Whitaker. This is great scrap. Um, but I do ultimately think Whitaker's just going to be way technically better, way superior, way too much like to deal with on the feet. And I think Costa's power is overrated. I don't think there's even a remote comparison between him and DDP. Costa's just genuinely shit. DDP just looks shit, but actually does well. With his Costa, been out for ages. His last fight's going to have been in August of last year by the time this comes around. So, he's been inactive as fuck. This man, like, made Vittori look like a maestro on the feet, and Whitaker cooked Vittori, so... I know everyone's worried about him coming off the DDP fight. He last fought in July. It's like six, seven months or something. He'll be fine. Costa isn't good in any way. He's probably got going to have a physical strength advantage. But even then, I don't see him out grappling Whitaker at all. He was hardly able to out grapple Luke Rockhold. So I'm picking Robert Whitaker with pretty high confidence. If he does lose, then the sport makes no sense because Costa is not good at fighting in any way. But I'm going to move on to another fight. And it's Ian Gary versus Jeff Neal. I've already talked about this, so I'm not going to go over it too much. But it was meant to be for UFC 299. Instead, it's for UFC 298, which I'm kind of glad about because that 299 card was, like, overly stacked. Um, and the 298 card was lacking a little bit. But now... They've evened it out because now if you look at 298, we've got Volk versus Tapoya, Cejudo versus Marab, Whitaker versus Costa, Gary versus Neil, and Tuivasa versus Tabora. That's a great main card. And then Ikram versus Fluffy Hernandez is like the featured prelim. There's a bunch of other good fights on there too. So 298's looking great. 299's still stacked as hell. It's still got, they'll just bump up like Blades versus Elmeida to the main card or something like that because that card's still elite. But. Ian Gary versus Jeff Neal, I'm picking Ian Gary, I do think he is going to outclass and just kind of run rings around Jeff Neal, make him look slower, make him look one-dimensional, and just Jeff Neal's pure boxing approach ain't going to work as well against Ian Gary, who, although he's a cuck and he's soy and he's an abomination of a human, is pretty good at striking, I'll give him credit, but... The next fight that we have is Yair versus Ortega for the February uh, 24th card in Mexico City. Um, it's the co-main event, but a five-round co-main event. So it's basically... I think everyone's going to look at that as the main event, honestly, because Moreno, Albazi, Lex Bill. I think they're just trying to like put it in a featured spot because it's flyweights and they don't... And I, I know, obviously, Moreno's Mexican, but so is Yair. So... And I guess it's for the number one contender, so they want to put a bit, um, put a bit of spotlight on it. And sometimes they do want to give the smaller weight classes the the spotlight. So I'm picking uh, Yaya Rodriguez to beat Brian Ortega. I think he was looking great in their first fight, and I think he's going to carry that over into the second one. Brian Ortega hasn't fought since July of 2022, so by the time he comes back, that's going to be what like fucking how many months like 18 19 months close to so i don't think ortega is going to look good coming back i think we're seeing it more and more is when these guys are coming back after long layoffs apart from john jones they look ring rusted they don't look as good um and i do think guy is who's been way more active he's only going to afford last july so he's he's got a full year um he's been in action for a full year more than um than Brian Ortega, so I do think he's going to look great. He looked good on the feet um, against Volk too, so I don't think he's going to look out of his element in any way. Um, but yeah, Yai is going to cook him on the feet, I think that goes without saying, and I think he will stuff the takedowns after Volk took him down. Ortega's offensive wrestling game is not all that good. Um, so yeah, I just think the overall threat of the striking is going to neutralize Ortega's any potential takedown attempts, and he's going to, he's going to be hesitant to shoot as well. Um, when he does need to get the fight to the grounds, because that's the only way he's going to win here, and I don't see it happening. But another fight that we have is Aaron Blanchfield versus Manon Furo. Um, I'm picking Aaron Blanchfield. This is a solid fight for March 30th. I hope it's not the main event, respectfully. Um, you know, women's MMA, not the biggest fan. Um, but Aaron Blanchfield is actually pretty good. I actually like her as a fighter. She's like one of the few women's MMA fighters that's actually like good and doesn't look like a spastic when they throw punches. So I'm picking Aaron Blanchfield. 
I think she'll get a decision using her grappling against Manon Fiora, who is a bigger opponent and does have more strength than her, I'd imagine, but Blanchfield's wrestling is great. And Fiora didn't look all that good against Nami Yunus coming up a weight class. Like, she won, but she just didn't look all that good. So I'm picking Blanchfield, and then I think she'll get a title shot. And this tells me we're obviously seeing Shevchenko Grasso trilogy maybe on UFC 300 as, like, a title fight on the main card. Um, but we move to, obviously, that event, UFC 300, and... We have uh, a few couple fights. So, Yuri Pahuska versus Alexander Rakic. Great fight. I'm picking Rakic, though, unfortunately. I want Yuri to win, but I just do worry that it's not a great stylistic matchup for um, for Yuri Pahuska. I do think that Rakic is grappling, his physical size, and his leg kicks as well are going to give um, give Yuri a tough time. So, I do think Rakic will get this one done. It's a great fight for 300, though. It'll be really interesting because I'm maybe this won't even be a main card fight. Because if this is not a main card fight, then this pay per view is going to be great. I know there's been a lot of worry that 300 is going to end up looking like a bit shit in comparison to a lot of the other cards. But the way it's looking right now, with this and then another matchup on the card, if these fights aren't even on the main card, we're in for a treat. So great stuff, Yuri versus Rakic. I do think Rakic will win, unfortunately, but I'd love to see Yuri chin him, and it's definitely possible. Um. But another fight that we have is, what do we have? Um, Kelvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling on UFC 300 as well. Great fight. Looking forward to it a lot. Going to be interesting to see how Aljamain Sterling looks up at um, up at featherweight. It's going to be cool to see. Because, obviously, a bantamweight big guy, he did physically dominate a lot of people. But in his last fight against Sean O'Malley, he didn't even look all that good. And wasn't able to get takedowns on a guy who was injured, apparently, going into that fight. So, it's unfortunate, I guess, for Aljo how he was doing in that fight, but up at featherweight, I think he'll be a bit more rejuvenated, probably a bit stronger, better chin, um, but I don't think it's going to go well for him, especially against Kelvin Cater. I do see this as an unfavorable matchup for him. Cater's going to be way bigger, going to definitely be way better on the feet, and I just don't think Aljo's style of being physically stronger than his opponent's in order to take the back and try and sub them, he's going to work on a guy like um, on a guy like Kelvin Cater, who's got relatively good takedown defense, but is also very strong. Like he's gonna, I think there's going to be a very big size difference, like evident size. I know Aljo's a big bantamweight, but Cater's a big featherweight too. Like there's going to be a notable size difference. Cater hasn't fought since. Um, November of last year, so the layoff could be a concern. If he come, but if he comes back all good, if his striking's pure, if his striking's crisp, I do see him. Um, I do see him touching up Aljo in this fight. Maybe getting a TKO, but more likely just because it's three rounds out, pointing him to a pretty clean uh, decision. So that's a great fight too. But another fight, Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. This was obviously the letdown. Um, this is the one that we all knew was coming. Uh, but we're not exactly thrilled for it. It's uh, Apparently, it's going to be the early prelim, like the very first uh, fight on the card. So at least we don't have to fucking pay for Bo Nickel on pay-per-view anymore because that was just getting annoying. They kept chucking him on main cards of big pay-per-views. It's like, fuck off. Put a better fight. Put a better fight on there. But they're listening now. They know that 300's a big deal, so they can't be wasting space on trying to make people pay for some prospect who's fighting bums. But... Bonicle's fighting another absolute can. He's slowly taken steps up the ladder. He's gone from Jamie Pickett, and then he probably went down to Val Woodburn. Now he's gone back up a little bit around that Jamie Pickett level with Cody Brundage, who isn't a good fighter. Don't get it wrong. Yeah, he's coming off a first-round KO win, but that's a slam KO where he was almost in a triangle. Like, he just ain't all that good. I do think he's going to get taken down very early in this fight, and he probably will get subbed or TKO'd inside a round. His striking is also dismal, so I do definitely see um I do see Bo Nickel having an advantage on the feet too. It's just this weird experiment with Bo Nickel how they have to just keep feeding him cans because apparently... He uh, is incapable of getting tested, you know. They they feel free to chuck all the other guys to the wolves and just give them top five opponents straight away and see if they can deal with it. But now Bo Nickel is the little darling of the UFC, the new baby. We gotta fucking slowly give him little cans. What do you know? Next, it's gonna be Abbas Magomedov. I guarantee you, if he beats if he beats Cody Bundage, it's gonna be Abbas Magomedov, and they're gonna say like. 
and we have Bo Nickel fighting a former, like, f fighting an opponent of the world champion, Sean Strickland. Like, they're going to try and do some dodgy marketing with that. But Bo Nickel should win comfortably. But these are great fights. I had to run through these quickly. Normally, I would have spent a little bit longer, uh, longer breaking down these matchups. But Whitaker versus Costa, amazing fight. I got Whitaker by... Uh, dominant decision, Gary versus Neil, we already knew it, but it's been moved to a different card, which is now make 298 great, um, so that's a great card, I'm picking uh, Ian Gary by dominant decision, then we got uh, Ortega versus Yair, I'm picking Yair by first round finish, probably TKO, I just think he's going to cook up Ortega, maybe not first round, but maybe second actually, but like, Early rounds finish, I don't see this going long, I do think Yair is going to get him out of there, get a big pop in Mexico, then we got Fuero versus Blanchfield. I got Blanchfield by UD, probably 29, 28, 30, 27. Uh, relatively impressive performance. And then we obviously got Cater versus Aljo. I got Kelvin Cater by 29, 28 decision. I reckon one of the rounds, Aljo is going to take his back. Um, but the other two, he's going to just keep it on the feet and cook him up. And then I reckon Yuri versus Rakic. I think I got Rakic by decision. So I got a lot of these fights going distance, but I do think they're going to be fun. Should be interesting to see what else Dana announces for 300. He says he's got more coming after the new year. So I think we're, we got, we got about a week and a half of no fight announcements. And then we're probably going to get a big, uh, big present on New Year's Day. Um, I reckon he'll give us a bunch more fight announcements for 300. I'd like to see like a triple header title fight. I'm hearing Leon maybe on there. Pereira's hinting that he might be on there. So that'd be sick if they get like Pereira Izzy Trilogy 300. Put Leon versus Bilal Komain. Put like Whaley versus uh, Yan Jonan third fight on the card. And then you get like, I don't know, Usman versus someone on the, on the main card, and then get, like, another great fight, and then put, like, Garbrandt versus Cruz on the prelims, get those kind of fights on the prelims, so it'll be interesting to see what happens, but I'll see you guys in the next one, which will be another tier list which we're coming out with, but yeah, peace out.